This presentation examines a bootstrapping interval for means. So recall, in order to construct a t-interval for the population mean, the requirements for the central limit theorem must be met. So either n must be large, that is, we're going to say that n has to be at least 30, or we have to conclude that if n is small, the underlying data set must be normal. But it's not appropriate if we have a small data set and the underlying data set is not normal. So in that instance, we cannot use a t-interval, and we need a different strategy. So in this case, we're going to use something called bootstrapping. So we're going to construct a confidence interval using this technique of resampling. So here's our example. Our goal is to construct a 95% confidence interval for this data set. 60, 62, 66, 68, 73, 92, 94, 96, 98, 100. Oftentimes in mathematics classes, this looks like the final exams. You have some students who didn't study. You had some students that did. Generally speaking, this will not be a normal distribution. So we're going to say that because there is no data in the middle. So in this case, we're going to say the sample size is small. There's only 10 numbers, and it's not normal. Therefore, it is not fair to use a t-interval. So what we're going to use instead is, is we're going to use a bootstrapping interval. But before we do that, we're going to also show one more way to demonstrate that the distribution is not normal. Namely, we're going to use a normality test. And the way the normality test is going to work, if the p-value, something we'll discuss later, of a normality test is small, we have evidence that the sample did not come from a normal distribution. So we're going to go to Minitab and set up our normality test. So here's my data, 60, 62, 66, 68, 73, 92, 94, 96, 98, 100. Now to do a normality test, we're going to go up to the Stat button go to basic statistics and then we're going to look at normality test. The data I'm interested in is C1, so I'm going to take C1, I'm going to say select and I have three different normality tests, I just tend to use Anderson Darling, that seems to work fairly well. And if we look at our results, it gives us a p-value, the p-value is 0.046. That's a small p-value. We're going to usually define small as less than 0.05. So this is more evidence that the underlying data set is not normal. So it's not fair to use a t-interval. Instead, we're going to use a technique called resampling. So here's our goal. Our goal is going to be to select samples of size 10. Why 10? Because we're starting with 10 numbers. If you started with 40 numbers, you would select samples of size 40. If you started with 20 numbers, you would select samples of size 20. So you're selecting samples of size 10 with replacement from the original data set so that your samples have the same number of elements as the original data set. Then we're going to construct means for each of our samples. And we are looking for a 95% confidence interval, so we're going to focus on the middle 95% of the means. So we're going to throw out the tails, but the middle 95% would mean we're looking for between the 2.5 percentile and the 97.5 percentile to define this confidence interval, this 95% confidence interval for mu. So I'm going to place the data in C1. I have to put the probability of selecting a given data point in C2. So C1 is going to have 10 numbers. C2, the probability of selecting the first number with replacement is 1 tenth. So 10 elements Every element has the same probability of being selected. Every element has a probability of being selected of 1 tenth or 0.1. So here is what our spreadsheet is going to look like. So in Minitab, we put in C1 and C2. And then here's our commands. Notice I'm saying random 1 million, and I'm saying C11 to C20. Why C11 to C20? I need to have 10 numbers in that row. Discrete C1, C2 is the command that we're going to use to select with replacement. Then R means C11 through C20. Take the row mean for those 10 numbers and put it into C22. And then the command is sort C22, C23. So in C23 will be a million averages. Each of the averages is constructed from these 10 numbers. And those 10 numbers are selected with replacement from our original sample. 
So our goal at this point is to find the 2 and 97.5 and percentile. So 2.5 percent of a million is 25,000. 97.5% of a million is 975,000. So if we beat 25,000, we would need the 25,000 in first. If we beat 975,000, we need the 975,000 in first. The fact is that one's not going to make much of a difference. So whether you leave it on or leave it off is not going to substantially change your answer. So looking for those percentiles, we're going to go through our list. So our command is going to be to let K1 equal C23, our sorted means number 25,001. And for the second one, we're going to say let k2 equal c23, number 975,001. And you'll see what the results of that are going to be. So the 2.5 percentile was 71.2. The 97.5 percentile, 90.4. So 95% of the means fall between 71.2 and 90.4. So we can conclude that the 95% confidence interval for mu is from 71.2 to 90.4. Now, we already have the data for the 95 percentile, so it wouldn't be very difficult for us to go ahead and compute the 99 percentile, 99 percent confidence interval. So if we're looking for the 99 percent confidence interval, we want the middle 99 percent, and that would range from the 0.005 to 0.995. So 0 0.005 times a million is 5,000. 0.995 times a million is 995,000. So we are looking for the 5,000 in first and the 995,000 in first elements in our data set. That will be the middle 99% of all of the means that I've constructed. So here's our syntax. I'm going to say let K3, many tab uses K for constants, be C23, number 5001. Let K4 equal C23, number 995,001. And now we're going to look at K3 and K4. The numbers are 68.4 to 93.2. And indeed, you will notice our 99% confidence interval is substantially bigger than the 95% confidence interval, which we would expect. Well, let's take a look at one more example. Going on Zillow.com, I started with a given region, and I looked at recently sold homes. So you'll notice they range from a relatively high number here of 329,000 to a relatively low number of 30,000. Now, typically home prices are not normally distributed, but we can check on Minitab to see if that is going to be the case. So I have my prices in C1. We're going to do a normality test, stat basic statistics normality test. And we're going to choose prices. And I'm going to say OK. And here you'll notice again the p-value is 0.045. The p-value is less than 0.05, so the p-value is small. There is evidence that this sample of 20 elements did not come from a normally distributed set. So we want to go ahead and determine the bootstrap probability. There are 20 elements in C1. So each element has to have the same probability of 1 20th or 0 0.05. So we're going to put 0 0.05 in each element here in C2. And I've done that just to show you. We'll say print C1, C2. And you will see that we have all of those numbers in C1 together with 0 0.05 next to it in C2. So now I need to generate many many samples so I'm going to say random 1 million C11 that's where I'm going to start through C30 why C11 through C30 I need to have 20 numbers in that row and then I'm going to say discrete C1 C2 and then we will let that happen the next command will be R mean C11 through C30. Again, 20 numbers in that row. And let's maybe save it in C32 and see what happens there. Okay, next we want to put them in order. So we're going to say sort 
C32, and let's put that into C33. I'm going to say let K1 equal C33, number 25,001. And we're going to say let K2 equal C33, number 975,001. Then I'm going to say print K1 and K2. And from that, then, we can say what our confidence interval is going to be. We're going to say the 95% confidence interval for the population mean is 113,000. 725 up to 190,625. If we want the 99% confidence interval, we are going to say let K3 equal C33, number 5001. Let K4 equal C33, 995,001. Then we're going to say print K3 and K4. So we're going to conclude this by saying our 99% confidence interval the 99% confidence interval for mu is 103,400 to 203,700. So we don't know what mu is, but we're pretty sure it's somewhere in that range. And that will conclude this presentation.